My name is Richie Rojas. I live here in Philly and I've been collecting New Balance sneakers for about 28 years. I'm not sure how many pairs of New Balance sneakers I have. I stopped counting a few years ago. Last I checked, it was about 450 pairs. So I think I have around 600 or so pairs now. One of my uh, first memories of New Balance was kind of seeing other guys wear them at like hardcore and punk shows and I thought they looked really cool. And then at the time I was already into sneakers so I would go to the mall or my local sports shop and you know see what was available. I like the big N logo on the side because it's a little different than the other brands that have kind of like these symbols with like movement. I kind of liked it was just kind of like a bold uh, you know, letter. And I think that's kind of why I always liked the brand. They kind of were just always seen as like an underdog brand or a little different. I still feel like I love New Balance now just as much as I did 20 plus years ago. Um, I think a big part of it is they seem to put out different uh, colors and different models in different regions of the world. So that always keeps me interested, especially in hunting things that are hard to find here in the U.S. Uh, I feel like nowadays other brands like, kind of see the same things in any store in any part of the world, but New Balance, when you travel around, you always see things that you didn't know existed or that you only saw on the internet. It's always fun uh, traveling and hunting for sneakers, so I definitely have like traveled all around Europe and UK. Uh, recently I bought shoes over in Japan. I bought a couple pairs when I was visiting my family in the Philippines, but pretty much anytime I'm on vacation or a trip, it's kind of cool to see what they have locally or what's different. My New Balance collection right now, I don't know, I would guess it's like a 50-50 ratio of vintage pairs and kind of current pairs that are wearable. Um, I definitely focus more on vintage and that's more where my passion is, but I do still love buying new products, um, mainly because they are wearable and they just make so many more models and colors now that they didn't back then. So I, I would say it's an equal half and half ratio. Um, I love searching for older New Balance models and kind of archiving them personally. Whenever I search for New Balances online or I find like old catalogs, I'm always coming across models I never knew existed, colors I never knew existed, uh, things that were exclusive to certain countries. Even that after like almost three decades of collecting has never ended. There's always like constant surprises out there. consider myself sort of a New Balance archivist. It's like really fun connecting with the other collectors out there. I feel like with New Balance, me and the other collectors kind of fill in a lot of pieces and kind of tell New Balance's story uh, for them, but in our own way. Um, over the years of collecting, I always find models online that I never knew existed, especially from different regions of the world. Um, or when I get, you know, vintage catalogs, I'm always flipping through them and just finding all this stuff I never knew existed or was uh, created. So it's always fun first finding out about those models, but then trying to um, hunt them for my collection. So New Balance is definitely a big thing here in Philly. Um, honestly, the trend started south in DC and from the 80s and Baltimore and kind of migrated here. Um, 990 is sort of like our staple shoe uh, here in Philly. We have a store called um, Young Sneaker City but a lot of locals call it Lee's because the owner's name is Lee. I actually worked there for a few months and um, you know that guy was selling like 50 pairs of 990s a day. A lot of people call him the king of 990s but um, yeah just a lot of neighborhood guys going to that shop. It's cool that they support like a locally owned mom and pop store and um, but yeah if you if you walk around Philly, especially North Philly or Southwest Philly, like nine out of 10 people are wearing full head to toe New Balance outfits. A lot of guys will buy like five pairs of 990s at a time, buy a new pair of 990s every month, uh, things like that. It's just like the most popular shoe here. I have to say my favorite New Balance model is the 1300. Don't think I have to say much about it. It's a pretty well-respected shoe. To me, it's like the perfect blend of sort of chunky, but also sharp. Uh, I feel like the colorways are just like the best colorways that go with any outfit, and they're really comfortable. I love the 496. I feel like that's an underrated model. That was sort of my gateway to New Balance because they were like $40 at the time, but they still kind of had that classic um, NB DNA, gray and blue suede and leather. 
it kind of had the look for a cheap price. Uh, my, my other favorite model is the 1600, which was on the opposite end of that, the most expensive running shoe at the time. I love that one because it was very technical and it was just insanely comfortable. It was sort of like an elite running shoe made of like full grain leather. It still has that classic uh, gray and blue um, MB look to it. Um, I also love the MT580, which was, you know, one of the most popular shoes out of Japan in the early 2000s. I love that it's kind of like a chunky trail shape, but also classic. And I love the panels. There's a lot of um, materials to play with, like plastic and nylon and like leather or suede. And, um, you know, that shoe has been collabed so many times. It, it, I feel like that's a fun shoe to kind of mock up with different colorways and materials. If there's one thing I love more than sneakers, it is music. I feel like lately I'm known more for my sneaker collection, but um, I'm, I'm actually more of a music guy. I know one time I was at New Bounce Corporate and they were kind of asking everyone what their hobbies were. And I, I told them if I had to choose one or the other, like I would literally throw all my shoes out the window if I got to keep my records and my guitars and my, you know, keyboards and stuff. In a way, I sort of discovered sneakers through music because when I was younger I was always hanging out at like hip-hop shows and hardcore punk shows and I just uh, always paid attention to what the older people were wearing because I respected them and wanted to look like them and I also was noticing what my favorite musicians and rappers were wearing because I wanted to be as cool as them so when I, I, I always paid attention to like what gear or sneakers they had and then I would kind of go to the store to find those models and colors so I would say mostly sneakers and music are separate but I, I would say there is a, a bit of a thread there somewhere down there yeah as far as uh, searching for new balance grails like uh, the MT580 Stussy collab the green one from back in the day was a big one I finally got a pair recently from Japan but um it's on display at a museum in Korea so uh, I only owned it for like a few months and it's already out of my hands pretty much until I get it back. My other grail is an original pair of 1300s from 1985. They're currently valued at like a thousand dollars. One day I'll, I'll you know plunk down the money and, and grab a pair but as of yet I don't have one yet. But you know with every grail I acquire a new one shows up so it, it literally is just like never ending. I fully accepted that this is just like a lifelong obsession for me and I'll I'll just like never be happy because once I cross something off the list I'm literally over it in like a week and there's always something else I'm gonna want to buy so it's just my life and it's just the rest of my life pretty much.